Hello, Internet, and welcome to another episode of Experimental Cataclysm, the show where I talk about recent changes made to the experimental version of Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead. Let's just dive in here. First up today, we've got a change to the way that food gets sorted in the consume menu. This was added by Viceroy Faust and specifically sought to organize sealed food together so that the menu is overall just a little bit easier to parse. Previously, food was sorted by shelf life. If multiple items had the same shelf life, they were then sorted in alphabetical order. Now, foods are still sorted in this way, but it is broken down into more categories. So first up, you will see unsealed food, and then you will see sealed food, and then you will see indefinite food. Within each section, the organization is still the same. There will be shortest shelf life food displayed at the top and then lower or longer shelf life food displayed lower down. And then anything that has the same shelf life will be then organized alphabetically. However, indefinite foods will ignore the sealed or unsealed section since it doesn't really matter that because they last forever. So you're going to see a mix of both together in that section of the menu. This is ultimately a nice change, I guess. Uh, I did just recently start recording a video on the consumer menu and my general thoughts were that it would be nice to have some sort of toggle for the different sorting methods. Sort of like how in character creation you can press a, I think it's just the S key, to toggle between alphabetical order and point cost. Sometimes I wish there was something like that for the consume menu where we could just uh, toggle through like alphabetical order versus shelf life versus just sealed and indefinite, things like that. However, I do think this, you know, would maybe not be necessary and it probably would be a lot of work to implement. So anyway, this PR is nice. It groups items together based on their sealed status. Not much to say about it. Next up, we've got a change to books by Bombastic Slacks. This change separates skill books from, I don't really know what to call them, let's call them just for fun books. In other words, books that affect skills and give recipes are now separated from books that are strictly for morale. Now this is a really fantastic change, this is something that we've all wanted for a long time even if we maybe didn't realize it. This allows you to set up two different sorting zones to separate useful books from, you know, I'm not going to say that just for fun books are useless, but I think most players view them that way. So this will make mass looting bookstores and libraries much much faster and easier since you can separate those two types of books. Previously it would just dump all of your books on one pile and you would still have to go through and manually pick up all the ones that affected skills. Now you will be able to save a lot of time and key presses by only sorting for manuals and ignoring those uh, fiction or just for fun books. This does also extend to your inventory categories as well. Books and manuals will now be listed separately. This enables you to use category select to quickly drop one type or the other. Again, this just speeds up the process where previously you would have to pick through them one by one and decide what to drop. This is a really great change. I don't have much to say about it, just, you know, it's a really good change. Based on the conversations I have seen and had on Discord, more and more people are looting using the zone manager tool rather than doing it manually. And this is the sort of change that I'm sure those players will be very happy to see. Next up, we've got a change regarding personal loot zones that we uh, we talked about those in our last show. This was added by Robob and just generally improves your ability to interact with these zones. Firstly, it adds a P to personal loot zones in the zone manager tool, allowing you to quickly distinguish regular zones from personal zones. This is a simple but good change and was something I suggested last week. It was really the only issue I saw with that original PR, the, the difficulty in telling these two zones apart. Now the other major thing in this PR is that you can now enable and disable personal loot zones at your leisure. I had not considered that to be a problem, but yeah, if you have a personal loot zone, they will always be around your character, so trying to sort your loot back at base could be a little bit more difficult. There would surely be overlap between your personal loot zones and your regular loot zones, and this would have led to a lot of trouble when you try to sort everything in your base. Being able to toggle them on or off allows you to select when you want to use those static zones, so overall, both of these features are quite good. Now, personal loot zones, as I said before, were a really good change, and this adds some quality of life that should smooth out the very few ruffles that previously existed. Next up from Bombastic Slacks, we've got the option to toggle detailed information for containers. You can find this in your settings menu under Interface on line 12. You can toggle detailed information for all containers or just for worn containers or you can fully disable the feature. Now this will use your normal default settings to display volume, weight, and length. So if you use kilos, it will show kilos. And if you use pounds, it will show pounds. Now I think that this will, in some capacity, help ease the confusion people have regarding length specifically. 
quickly. We see a lot of people saying, oh, my inventory says I have X amount of space or, you know, whatever they're talking about. And then they point to that display in the upper right corner of the pickup menu or whatever screen that they're on. And then we as a community have to explain to them like, hey, actually, you know, that's not accurate because that's an overview of your inventory. It doesn't display each individual container. They each have their own individual inventory and blah, blah, etc. You get it. So my hope was that people seeing this information displayed next to each bag might help newer players realize that's the problem. Oh, and I probably should have mentioned this PR is specifically for adding the ability to toggle this option on or off. There was an original PR that added this detailed container information that was from Molten Head was was added maybe a month ago just to give credit where it's due. I'm not sure why I didn't cover it when it was first added to the game. I guess I just missed it. It's sort of one of those issues with me not playing the game right now. This is obviously very visible. I probably should have noticed this, but I didn't. Sorry about that. So anyway, I like the change overall. Displaying that information seems pretty valuable, and I do think having the option to toggle it is also pretty great. I don't think I would like seeing detailed information for every single container I pick up. I personally would only really care about what is being worn on my person. Next up we've got several reworks to armor in the game alongside the addition of different types of steel. Now these were quite a few changes here and they've come from Drew 4484. So firstly this adds different types of steel to the game. I believe previously we only had budget steel and hardened steel or something like that in addition to regular iron. Now specifically this change adds low medium and high carbon steel. Now here's the tricky bit that uh, might be hard to explain for non-contributors. We we have things in the game called materials. Materials are then assigned to items based on how that item is made, or, or what it's comprised of I guess. For instance, leather is a material in the game and it has a lot of information assigned specifically to leather. Then let's say I personally add a new jacket to the game, I want it to be leather so I assign it the material of leather. This then adds information to that item directly from the entry for leather as a material. For instance, my jacket's armor values will be derived from from whatever material I assign it and then that is combined with the thickness of the material that I assign to the jacket. So my new leather jacket has a bash protection of let's say just two for example, it probably wouldn't be two really. So now if I go in and I change my leather jacket's material to be iron, all of that information gets shuffled because now it is inheriting those details from iron rather than leather. This would then change my jacket's protection values to eight let's say. Now hopefully that made sense. So materials are a way for items to inherit certain information information and they are relevant for quite a lot of things in the game. This also helps us determine how much damage a weapon should do or how much an armor will protect the player. Right, anyway, hopefully that makes sense. Uh, basically, so each of these new steels have different protection values assigned to them and weapons made of these steels will be evaluated in different ways depending on which type is used. Okay, so that's great, what, but why should you, hopefully this is all making sense, it, it feels like it's going to be confusing. But anyway, why should you as a player care about this? Well, the first one, that will be obvious is that all of the different metal armors that you have made in the past will be getting tweaked and swapped over to the new different materials. So you're going to notice protection values being shuffled for things like chainmail and, and in fact Drew has already made quite a few PRs addressing the different types of armors. This will also likely lead to changes in material requirements for crafting metal armor and weapons although I have not seen any PRs that address that yet. So ultimately I'm not sure how the expansion of blacksmithing will turn out. I'm a little nervous it's going to create a lot of clutter in the uh, crafting menu. You know, if we end up breaking down items into individual steel qualities, I'm just, I'm hoping there's some way around putting like dozens of new recipes into that menu. Unfortunately, that would probably also require someone to rework the crafting menu, which frankly, I think is something that needs to be done. It would be nice to be able to nest recipes so we don't have, for example, a menu full of flour recipes. It would be nice to be able to select one entry that just says flour and then have that open up and show all the other recipes. Whereas currently in the game, in our crafting menu, if you search for flour, I think we have like six or seven different recipes. And this just leads to clutter in the menus, and I suspect that that's what's going to happen with armor, and it's not going to be pretty. Anyway, that's my worry for the future of the blacksmithing recipes, is that it's just going to add a ton of crafting menu clutter. For instance, here's a list of several plate armors that have already been reworked or added to the game. You'll see that there are quite a few here, and if we had the ability to craft all of these items, that would make the the crafting menu pretty unbearable. It's worth noting though that these currently do not spawn in the game and are not craftable, but obviously that's stuff that's going to get tweaked in the future. 
Uh, you know, in fact, originally I was going to cover a lot of the armor changes, but now that I'm looking at the PRs, there's quite a few of them. So I'm not going to go over every single item, especially because there are so many variants of just slightly different thicknesses, things like that. And of course, again, these depend on what quality of steel is going into them. So I'll just say plate armor and chainmail are the ones that are notable here. But again, this will eventually probably touch all metal armors and craftable weapons. I do want to stress that it will take a staggering amount of auditing and tweaking though before all of that happens. This is going to take a long time. If you remember when length was first added to the game, it took months for the items in the game to catch up and get proper lengths assigned to them. In fact, people still sometimes point out inconsistencies with item lengths, so I just wanted to point it out to people. Well, I, actually I wanted to cover it in a lot of detail, but it's a pretty expansive thing, so I think we're just going to leave it at what I have already said. Anyway, ultimately I, I hope that all made sense. I do think this is a good change. Metals in the game have been a little lackluster for a long time. I mean, heck, even some items in the game were still treated as iron when they clearly would have been made out of steel. It's, it's going to be nice to have proper steel qualities. But anyway, let's move on to our final change of the week, and that also is from Drew4484. This one adds propane and propane propane accessories to the game. And no, I don't have a good Hank Hill impression, so I can't do it. I'm sorry. Now, if you've been around for any length of time, you may have seen the community discussing propane. It's something that the dev team has wanted in the game for a while, but if I recall correctly, Kevin had been holding out for, uh, uh, you know, actually, I guess I don't remember, but I do remember talking about it and thinking that his logic made sense. So I, I just, I don't remember. Don't judge me. We talk about a lot of changes all the time. I can't remember everything. Anyway, this PR adds propane as a material and propane tanks to the game. Now tanks come in two, five, and 20 gallon forms, but they currently do not spawn. You will, however, find them in the future, and Drew said that they considered a big thing on their to-do list adding these to spawn, so I would expect that in the next, I don't know, month or whatever. Now the main benefits of propane are, well, actually there are quite a few benefits of propane, but I guess mostly players would immediately think of propane forges and propane cooking. And on that note, Drew also added propane lanterns, cookers, and forges. Now currently, the forge at least does not spawn in the game, I'm not sure about the other items, which I didn't know propane lanterns were a thing, I actually had to google it, but they exist, so you know, whatever. So why am I telling you all of this if the tanks and forges do not even spawn yet? Well mostly because they will appear in the nearest future. Propane is pretty handy, tanks would, at least where I live, be very commonly found in people's homes. There's also a big rack of them at my local gas station, at my local grocery store, pretty much all of those type of locations. Alright internet, I'm going to re-record this entire section of the video, so sorry if the audio is different. I'm going to try to match it up in editing, but I often can't really do that. So basically the first time around I extolled the virtues of propane. I talked at length about propane, which is just sort of boring and not really necessary, and a real Hank Hill move to work in another Hank Hill reference. So instead of that I want to touch on my concerns for propane coming to the game. So firstly, I'm concerned that they're going to force scarcity on propane, which is a very common fuel that appears in many people's homes and backyards and at most commercial locations for you to exchange tanks. And although propane seems like something that people would panic buy or stock up on in an emergency situation like the end of the world, I am a little concerned that it's going to be too rare to really become valuable in the game. Or, or not valuable per se, but too rare to really be utilized by the player. So that's one concern I have, although there's nothing in the game yet to indicate that that will be a problem. And then secondarily, I'm a little concerned about the crafting recipes that have been added for these objects already. Now the propane forge and the propane cooker have both had uh, crafting recipes added to the game, and both of them currently require a pretty high fabrication skill along with propane lanterns as components. Now firstly, I don't think it makes sense to use these propane lanterns to make a propane forge or grill. I do believe that we should break that down into constituent parts that the player can then harvest uh, in other locations, not just from propane items but maybe from gas stoves or things like that. So that's one concern I have. Secondarily, I think that both a propane forge and a propane cooker are actually really low-tech items. I'm going to show a screenshot or video from a YouTube channel called Big Stack D. I watch them sometimes. Uh, listening to the forge sounds really makes me sleepy, so I, I like listening to those videos. And you'll see that this forge is literally just an insulated container that has, uh, you know, like a tubing that goes into it to feed propane into the, the mechanism. So these are 
are not complicated devices, so for this recipe to have Fabrication 7, I think is a little, uh, little too high. Now this is the initial implementation of these crafting recipes. It is incredibly likely that they will be reworked in the future, but my first thoughts were those two things. I think the Fabrication skill is too high for what is not really that difficult of a craft, and secondarily I think that finding lanterns to make these objects will be very, very difficult and so no one will make them. And for this reason, I think in terms of realism it doesn't make sense, but I also think in terms of game balance it doesn't really make sense because no one will ever make a propane forge when the charcoal forge is much more obtainable. And again, very, very new things uh, and very likely to change in the future, but those were my concerns when I first saw this. And I just wanted to re-record that section because I did not really know that at the time and because I talked too much about just propane as a concept rather than the actual application of it. And really regardless of all of that, these changes that have been made and the propane coming to the game, the tanks and all that stuff that's going to be added over the coming weeks and months, those are really good things. And I'm super excited to see them come to the game and I'm super excited to be able to exploit propane in the future. And with that, internet, thank you so much for watching. Hit that like button on your way out. I'm, I'm going to say if we don't get seven or eight, you know, hundred thousand likes on this video, I'm just going to cancel the series. So make sure you hit that like button. And with that, thank you so much for watching. I, of course, will be back in a couple weeks where we will cover more changes and I will keep my eye on all of these things that are being added to the game. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.